All right, guys, back here, DEMA 2016, Roman Castro from Spiro Nation here with DeeperBlue.com, and we're actually at the Maverick America booth here with Mark Lavachetta. He's been on our podcast. Thank you for taking the time to be on the show, and now it's time for you to tell us a little bit about Maverick America. Hey, thanks, Roman. Welcome to DEMA. Been coming to this trade show forever. It's uh, fun, the diving industry trade show for the professionals, so... This is where the newest stuff comes out, gets announced. What we've done this year, this is our new catalog, the 2017. So we added to the collection a full American line of made in America products that I kind of alluded to during our interview when we did that podcast. Sorry, what products are you going to show us today? Okay, so we have, uh, for example, this new line of uh, artisan spear guns made by uh, Darian Yokoji, so we wanted to make a nice hybrid line using a custom spear gun maker, craftsman, designer of small batch guns. So these guns have been in the Hawaiian market since 1993, and what we did is we just decided to incorporate a carbon fiber tube. Uh, very, very, you've seen this gun before, uh, similar guns before, Daryl Wong has very nice hybrid guns. Uh, what we decided to do is incorporate our parts because now we own the Steve Alexander production of components. So uh, we got uh, Darian Yokoji here. Uh, Darian Yokoji is a Hawaiian who's been making these hybrid guns since 1993 to build a beautiful uh, body for this gun that combines carbon fiber, antique, uh, and of course all of the Steve Alexander components. Everything is polished, hand polished, the parts are all um, alloy to uh, military grade specs, yeah, and uh, the finishing is to handgun and firearm specs. And uh, you can see the attention to detail, everything even including the muzzles, like the Delrin muzzle machine from Solid Block. So cutting no corners, we are introducing our first full American line uh, to add to the Maverick collection. But the trigger mechanism is an iconic piece of equipment. Uh, for the Spiros that have been, especially the Southern California tradition of Spiros, if you talk to them, they will tell you what a Steve Alexander trigger mechanism is. Uh, we're not going to change anything about this. We took over uh, Steve Alexander's business. We bought the business from him. And the idea here is we're not going to change anything, keep the components the same, and just add an element of finish to kind of glori glorify his product line uh, because it's really nice and top quality. And so that's what we're going to do with it. Cool. That's great. All right, we're here in the, you, have, you, guys, have, you guys have a huge booth. <laughs> we're here on the other side of the booth where all the fins are amazing. So tell us about the latest fin you guys are putting out. So C4 is our carbon fiber fin line. It has been since 2001 for me. Um, he's changed his production. The small Italian manufacturer has decided to pretty much leave the standard big square T700. And still, really, he's the only manufacturer producing them in, in, in T700 was. And he's left them and gone to a prepreg, which is a different way to, to, to get carbon fiber. It actually comes in a sheet and it's kept in a freezer, uh, as opposed to just the cloth. And he's using the HT, as he calls it, the high tensile strength uh, carbon fiber in all of his fins now. Except the two entry-level models, uh, which uh, kind of go back to the roots of the company, like this one, the Falcon. So the Falcon is like another iconic name in C4. That's a long-standing name for his model, and he decided to make a, uh, the new Falcon a base fin using his old T700. Uh, the nice thing about this fin is it's affordable. It's uh, under $400 for a C4 carbon fin. And then, and then we also have another, another set of fins he's going to show us. So the other fin that's new this year and improved is the Scorpio. Uh, it's now called the Scorpio DNA, and essentially just got a little facelift. That's all. Uh, you can see the shape of the fin has changed slightly, uh, and it's just been made a little bit uh, cleaner, changed the graphics, but it's the same Scorpio fin, which is C4's entry-level fin into the carbon market. And what's that retail for? This fin here is right at $400. Awesome. Yeah. That's with book pockets or just with, fin with book pockets? Perfect. Yeah. Awesome. It's good value. Next, we're going to check out the Pathos Roller. Well, see, you're familiar with the Pathos brand name, yeah. and Pathos has always made standard guns. Until this year, they just came out with two new guns, a sniper roller and a carbon roller. So I'll just talk about the one that stands out the most, which is the new sniper roller, um, and show you this gun. Uh, and uh, it comes all the way down to 60 centimeters. But the other thing that's pretty noticeable is the barrel shape. Yeah. 
and that it's in closed track. So what they did with this gun is they took their new sniper body with a regular muzzle, and they used that enclosed track gun to make the roller version. And as you can see, um, it's the same body as the sniper, but on the bottom, the gun has like three tabs so that you can hook the roller band on the bottom and um, the top band, would with the, the wishbone will go straight on that yeah. initial shark fin. So you're really never having to pull the band fr from the muzzle all the way back. It just, it's already pretty much set and pre-tabbed. Uh, and then you just stretch it starting on the bottom and then work your way across the top. Right, See, even most roller guns now, you would start there and it's kind of hard to pull the wishbone. Right, and, and with this little cheater tab, like you said, Roman, you start there, turn the gun upside down, and then you're actually pulling on the band on the bottom. We'll make loading a roller easier. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, and what are, these, what are these retailing for? I think these guns are in the high 400s to mid 500s. Yeah. So with, with us is uh, Massimo Quattrone, Italian professional spear fisherman, official product designer and tester for Salvimar. And I'm just going to act as your translator because his English isn't too great. Tell us a little bit about this gun. Eh, dici un po' di questo fucile. Allora, il, eh, il lavoro più grande che abbiamo fatto, grazie alle indicazioni che ci sono state date proprio da Mark, è cercare di rendere un prodotto nato per il Mediterraneo ideale anche per la pesca nel, nei mari degli Stati Uniti. E normalmente da noi si utilizzano de, tra virgolette, dei calibri piccoli, e invece qui negli Stati Uniti c'è bisogno, dato che i pesci sono molto più importanti, di andare, tra virgolette, armati come si deve. So, essentially what Massimo is saying here, that given the fact that in the Mediterranean and in Europe, where Salvimar is from, the fishing is different, and they start with smaller caliber weapons, they went back to the drawing boards and tried to take a product that was already set up and really ideal for their waters and to develop it and adapt it for U.S. waters, U.S. markets and our, our needs. That's awesome, that's great, cool. Um, per riuscire a, ad ottenere un, un ottimo risultato ci siamo eh, fatti aiutare dalla tecnologia che c'è in questo momento eh, in, al mondo e abbiamo utilizzato un sistema nuovo che viene applicato normalmente alle armi e alle armi da guerra e siamo passati da realizzare dei componenti in acciaio tagliato laser a dei componenti in acciaio iniettati all'interno di uno stampo per far sì che tutti i pezzi escano esattamente uguali e perfetti e in più con delle caratteristiche tecniche superiori a quello che è il normale acciaio inossidabile che si utilizza per realizzare questi componenti. Okay, well, that's going to be a mouthful. So, essentially what Salvi Mars done here is they've started going back from scratch on the trigger mechanisms instead of using traditional methods of making trigger mechanisms like laser cut triggers and mixing them with some plastic injection molded parts. They took up a technology that is actually only being used in the firearms industry, which is this uh, metal injection molding technology. And uh, what that does is it replaces the current status quo of making spear fishing trigger mechanisms that are cut on a laser and don't offer the same precision and consistency piece by piece that metal injection molding, which is what's used in the firearm in industry is used today. So they are they're doing MIM trigger mechanisms. That's great. Il nome di questa tecnologia proprio all'arbalete. Infatti si chiama metal. Ok. E abbiamo fatto eh, molti test prima di prendere una decisione su quale fosse le, la, la geometria del, del meccanismo e ci siamo resi conto che utili, utilizzando metallo su metallo senza eh, rendere le, le due superfici scivilo, scivolose tra di loro con un frequente utilizzo le parti tendevano a bloccarsi tant'è vero che tutti i motori eh, scorrono a bagno di olio 
quindi i pistoni di una macchina cammina all'interno del, del motore a bagno d'olio. In questo caso l'acqua è l'unico lubrificante, ma in tutti gli elementi marini, compresi i motori, le boccole dove girano le assi dei motori non sono mai dello stesso materiale dell'asse e quindi era importante riuscire a capire come far sì che queste due parti non tendessero poi a gripparsi, adesso in inglese grip. So essentially what Massimo is saying that they developed is they looked at uh, you know, what's used uh, previously in trigger mechanisms, the parts were a mix of plastic parts that touched with the metal parts. Now these were you know, high strength parts, uh, injection molded with fiberglass, extremely high wear and tra triggers with the advantage that they didn't make much friction so the trigger pull was light. The problem with with the metal to metal parts was that they binded more so they offered a higher resistance. In order to overcome that, they went back and looked at, you know, the way like a piston in a car works, it's lubricated by oil and that's what avoids the binding. Well, in, in the marine environment, it's the water that does that. So they had to develop a, two metal parts that would touch each other that had the same friction coefficient and um, were made from the same strength metal. So, and that, and that is where this uh, little wheel, if you look at the trigger mechanism very carefully, comes from. The little wheel in this trigger, which is almost like a roller, helps when you pull the trigger, it rolls around on the sear, and the stainless steel used for the trigger is the same stainless steel used for the shaft, which in this case is 17.4. So they're extremely strong and they match, and one isn't stronger than the other, so you can't, you don't have to worry about premature wear and tear between the stainless steel. That is very well thought out, it's impressive. Um, normalmente nelle armi da guerra il carico che deve essere portato uh, sul grilletto okay, è tarato su un chilo di pressione. Okay. Su questo uh, arbalete, sul metal, noi siamo riusciti ad arrivare con 100 kg di di, di trazione degli elastici ad uno sforzo per permettere lo sgancio dell'asta di 6 etti. Uh, okay, cool. so, seems like you kind of understood what he said. So essentially, uh, Beretta Firearms, the official uh, handgun that the armed forces use in Italy, their, their, their trigger mechanism has about one kilo of pull effort. Well, their new trigger in this gun is about six ounces. So it's very much a sensitive trigger under a pretty reasonable load, 100 kilos of pressure, which is normal pressure. That's cool. That's cool. That speaks more on like the on like the the design and like the engineering behind it. That's really cool. Uh, tell us how we can get these guns and everything else you showed us uh, today. So Salvi Mar's website, uh, Massimo is uh, www.salvimar.com. You heard it in Italian, and it's salvimar.com, and here in America, maverick-america.com, we're the uh, U.S. distributors for Salvimar. Thank you so much for taking the time to do this with us. Thank you. Thank you.